Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're going to talk about the TCL Series 5 televisions. This is something new, but I wanted to talk about this because I was really pleasantly surprised at uh, having to purchase a television and the experience that I've had with the TCL Series televisions. This was something that I did not have any experience with. The TCL line I had recently only heard about and had just kind of written it off up until the point where I had a Samsung TV die on me. Now, I had a Samsung TV that I bought a few years ago. It's really only about four years old. Oh, no, it was about three years old and it just flat out died. And I thought, well, I'll fix it. But it actually was the LCD of the display that was broken. And so there was nothing that I could do about it. And so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a television or uh, on anything really, because I had just gotten rid of two other Samsung TVs from my office that I wasn't using. And so I was in this frustrated state of not wanting to spend much money on a TV, but wanting to make sure that I got a decent TV for spending any money at all. And so that's where I ended up, uh, why I ended up buying one. Now, also the fact that they're available on Amazon and they're also uh, available with free returns. So if I didn't like the TV, I had 30 days, I could decide to return it. I didn't even have to pay any money to return it if I didn't like it. Now, it turned out that I do like the TV and that's why I'm here to talk about it today in the video. But if you're interested in these TCL TVs, I got links down in the description below. If you click on the link and make a purchase or make a purchase for for anything for that matter. You're supporting the channel here. There's no cost to you. It's just an Amazon affiliate link and it helps support our channel here and keeps us making videos. So the TCL TV actually really impressed me for the price. I was blown away that I could get a 50 inch 4K television for as cheap as I did. And the prices actually have gotten a little bit cheaper since I bought mine uh, about two months ago now. And so with that experience, I was, I was really pretty impressed. Out of the box, the TV was fantastic. I didn't, I didn't uh, calibrate it or really do anything. I just put it up, plugged our Apple TV in, and boom, we were ready to go. And I was really pleasantly surprised with the experience uh, of this television. So I want to talk a little bit about what impressed me. I have some things that kind of underwhelmed me about the TV, but I can't get too crazy about those because the price point is just insane. And then I'll talk about whether or not I would buy one again. So the specs really impressed me. I mean, 4K UHD LCD display, 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is pretty good uh, for the price point. The HDR10 support with Dolby Atmos sound, it has built-in Wi-Fi. There really was just a lot, and I apologize if I like look up that way, like the television is right there. And so it's easy for me while I'm talking about it to like want to look at it. But um, it really is pretty good. It has four HDMI ports. The bezels are really small around this television. So it just looks really good. And something that is this cheap typically doesn't look as good as it does. I think they did a really good job designing this TV. And the small bezels definitely give it a premium feel. The bright image and vibrant colors also kind of blew me away. I just was not expecting to get such a bright TV for this price and also have uh, just the color range that this TV was able to perform uh, based off of what I was used to, which was a Samsung TV that was really only a couple of years old. The fact that I could utilize Google Assistant Google. with this TV also was Play pretty cool. We have a lot of Google Assistant devices in our home, broken. even though I'm primarily an iPhone user. We use Google Assistant because it's better than all the others, and being able to utilize that with the TV also was pretty cool. I was also pretty impressed with the user interface. A lot of smart TVs have a pretty poor user interface. They're hard to use, but because the TCL TV is integrated with Roku and Roku has been around for a while and their process has always been pretty simple, the user interface has been clean and easy to get around. That Roku interface in this TCL TV really makes for a nice experience. Then I was really impressed by the weight. This TV is really lightweight. When it got delivered, because it got delivered via Amazon, I was really surprised at just how light it was when I pulled it in and uh, pulled it out of the box and started to hang it up on the wall. So now let's talk about those things that underwhelmed me a bit. Now, the first thing that I did notice is that the image seemed very contrasty. And what that tells me is that the contrast ratio might be a little lower on this television than some others, but that's okay. I didn't really mind so much. Since I initially got the TV, we've watched a lot of movies. Disney Plus become available. And so we've watched a lot of movies on Disney Plus and we're primarily streaming all of our content anyways. And even though I've got really good internet here, 
at home, the streaming of the content sometimes is going to mean slightly lower resolutions in different situations. And so I'm going to lose a little bit by streaming as opposed to having like something on a hard disk here uh, that I can pull locally and be starting out with something that's just much more high quality. The display itself also seems a little overly glossy and that gives you some reflections. Uh, looking into the TV right now, I see a lot of reflections. Of course, it's turned off, but with the TV that I had up there before, I didn't notice those. And when we're watching movies or scenes that are a little bit lower light situation, it's a darker scene, I definitely can see a lot of those reflections. And so watching TV on a day that's bright with the windows open, like today, it definitely, you're gonna notice some of those reflections depending on what you're watching, of course. So I don't have access to a whole lot of HDR content, but a lot more HDR content is becoming available. And this TV kind of struggles a little bit with HDR. And I think that has to do with that uh, lack of dynamic range with the contrast ratio. You just don't have as much there, but that's gonna be expected in a television at this price point. It does support HDR10, which is great, which means I'm gonna be able to experience that more detailed, more depth that HDR brings, but it's not gonna be as good of an experience as if we went with a TV that was much more expensive. And one of the other frustrations is that the color and the contrast kind of fall apart when you start to view this TV from uh, any sort of an angle. Uh, the viewing angle isn't that bad, but it isn't really that good either. And you could definitely tell it start to fall apart. So when I would walk into the room from an angle and something was on the TV, it just looked really poor and washed out until I got more straight on with the TV and the experience was a lot better. Of course, uh, viewing angle is a challenge for a lot of televisions, but especially at the lower price point where you're sacrificing things, you're going to lose out on that viewing angle. And on this TV, the viewing angle does fall apart a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's just, you know, if you have a very wide living room, you're probably going to want to go with a bigger television so that you can make up for that viewing angle. Now, the audio quality is also something that you never expect to be very good on a flat panel television like this. There just isn't a whole lot of room for speakers. And the audio quality out of this television is is okay it's not really that great i do wish that it was a little better but it's on par with the tv that i had before so i can't really complain i do know that tvs that are current models that are around a little bit more than this price point typically have maybe a little bit better audio experience but i really can't complain this tv gets nice and loud it just doesn't have the dynamic range in the audio that i would like to see out of a television of course with flat panel tvs if you're looking for a good audio experience, you're not going to be relying on the audio that comes out of the television anyways. You're going to go with a sound bar or some sort of external audio device that can produce better overall audio for your viewing experience. And then there's the issues of this television being kind of ad supported. You're getting a really good price because it has Roku in there and Roku is showing you some ads. It's not overly intrusive at all and the ads never interrupt your viewing experience. They're just ads that you can't seem to get rid of. Now because I utilize an Apple TV in my home. We just own so many movies on it and some games and stuff, and it's just easier for my family to utilize than the Roku platform. We don't own a bunch of stuff or have anything in the Roku platform or even utilize some of the Roku specific apps. So it was easiest for me just to try to close down as much of that Roku experience as possible and make the TV boot up and go straight into that HDMI one, which is where my Apple TV TV is plugged in. So I was able to uninstall some of the pre-installed apps because my kids were confusing Netflix on the Roku aspect of the TV with the Apple TV. And so I was really able to customize that, which was nice and get past that ads experience by just getting them straight from turning the TV on to getting the Apple TV uh, enabled. And then they can, of course, utilize the television through the Apple TV. So some closing thoughts. I am really impressed by the price point of this TV. You know, uh, really, I hadn't been following the pricing of TVs too much. But, you know, I walk into Costco a couple times a month and see the prices of TVs. I go to Best Buy from time to time and see the prices of TVs. And so seeing a TV that was costing well under $400, uh, that was this size of a television, that was 4K, I was just really impressed. And so I would buy one again because the price is just too good. There are some competitors to this television that Samsung and some of the other manufacturers have that are just a little bit more expensive, but not much more. And and they may uh, be better in some different ways. 
But with this TV, you can't go wrong because of the price point and with the Amazon free returns. If you get the TV and you don't like it, put it back in the box, send it off to Amazon. It's no money out of your pocket. And so for me, it was risk free to try this out. And that is exactly why I decided to go with this TCL because it was one of the few TVs that had the free returns back to Amazon. And so I wanted to jump on that and just give it a try. And I'm glad that I did. So there are links down in the description below. If you purchase the TV using my links to Amazon, there's no cost to you to do that, but it does help support our channel here, so I appreciate that. There are a variety of different sizes of the TV. I went with the 50 inch, and I kind of wish that I had gone with one size larger, but the 50 inch has been really good, and I'm glad that I went with it. It wasn't a change that I decided, well, I'll, I'll utilize that free returns so that I can return it. I, I'm fine with the TV that we have. It's a little bit bigger than the one that we had prior. So I think there's a lot of value in this television, especially considering a, a lot of us are probably utilizing some other sort of a device. If you have an Apple TV like I do, I just shut down as much as I could in the Roku device so that we can control as much of the TV with po as possible with the Apple TV remote. If you utilize uh, an Amazon Fire, Fire Stick or something like that. You, just, you plug all these things right into your television. Uh, I used Google Stadia with it, which is a new gaming platform from Google. I also have the Google Cast or Chromecast or whatever it's called these days plugged in. So there's lots of ways that I can interface with this television with other devices. Of course, Roku is a pretty decent platform. I, I like what Roku has become over the years but it, it's just not the platform that I really want to go with. It's nice though that I can delete all the apps and then just set it up so that it's really easy just to go right into our Apple TV so that my family has uh, the solution that they're used to, which is the Apple TV, and we have access to all of our content. So with that said, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I wanted to talk about this TV because I posted some stuff in my Instagram story and people were asking me like, what is a TCL? I've never heard of that before. And then a couple people were asking me about it because they had seen it on Amazon and thought the price was too good to be true. So I'm here to tell you that the price in some ways is too good to be true because there are some limitations there that this TV has, some things that underwhelmed me a bit, but the price is, is fantastic and the performance is really Really good. I can't, you can't beat this TV with uh, all that it comes with for the price. So I highly recommend it, especially if you are just looking to replace a TV that you've had for a number of years. This is going to be a great upgrade. Uh, of course, it's not the best upgrade that's there. If you have a bigger budget, you definitely want to go with a higher end TV than this. But for those of you that are looking for a great experience that is a around a good budget as far as the price point, this is probably the best option that's out there right now. So check out those links in the description below. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Click that subscribe button to be notified when I put out new videos, and I'll see you back in the next one.